how is that? How, how are you? How is everything with everybody? <laughs> Everyone is well, waiting for you. So how yeah. about Canada? <laughs> uh, we're fine. In Vancouver, actually, we've been controlling the situation quite well. And people just uh, try to stay home and not not having big parties or anything like that even when we see people on the street when we're taking a short walk or something people are gonna keep a distance so okay so yeah um, everybody has been doing well and uh, trying to keep social distance right now okay uh we have uh, a lot of students studying at uh, fdu and yep. they are they are very happy staying they keep staying in canada and you know you, you know the parents uh called them again and again asking them to come back home but they say <laughs> no no mom no parents okay we want to stay here and we have the students potential student win huyang from fdu uh -huh. and yeah he, he phoned his parents saying that uh he's got a job and he's not jobless he's staying home and doing the job from FDU, FDU and you still get yeah, yeah. away. Actually, um, we try, uh, we, we have been trying a lot to try to prepare for the remote learning. And also, uh, for we use a lot of um, just even uh, on campus, so like help to organize events work at the receptionist or work for the IT program uh, department. Even though they cannot work right now, we still paying them because uh -huh. it's important. Because it's important to them. They need that money to pay for rent or buy food. And really? Yeah, so, so we continue to pay to uh -huh. the end of their semester. Oh, really? Very, yeah. very happy. Very Even though most of the students work right now, they are not working. But we're still paying. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, we need to help them to go through the difficult time. It's difficult for everybody. You know, um, yes, this year uh, the brother also came there studying, and uh -huh. they are they, they are sharing the same room, and the house. You know, the the okay, uh, didn't charge any money, and yes, they that's they are offered good. free really free good. monthly okay, oh, rent yeah. house rent. Students okay. are very happy on campus as, as well. And now we change to remote learning. Actually, the feedback is very positive because we started to train our faculty a long time ago. Um, so they are all like very well in terms of remote learning through Zooms and our own system. So students are very happy and faculty are keeping very close connection with the student. So like uh, all the one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions, one-on-one -on -one tutors, it's all happening. Mm, okay. Yeah. So this the parents want to meet in person, that's all. The, the parents want to send uh, the best uh, thanks, the best uh, regard to you, the university, uh, because the, yes, the, the children now, they are safe, okay? Very yeah. well. Oh, thank you so uh, They are all yes, studying online, and apart from that, they can get a yes, sponsor from the university as well. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. I'm happy that the parents are happy and students are happy. Yeah, okay. we can you can begin your that. Please so begin. I'm going to share my screen. Is this one? Can you see my screen now? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly go through the PPT uh, to provide more information. I'll take more questions after this. So I'll go very quickly. So Fairland Dickinson University was founded in 1942 with the mission of global education. So we're the first university in the US that started to promote global education very, very early because our founding father of the university also was the founder of the United Nations. 
Uh, so we've been having a very close relationship with the United Nations and the university has been focusing on global education. Um, it's a not-for-profit university, so we've been, especially in recent years, we've been doing lots of fundraising. So we have, um, in general, like the goal of fundraising every year is like 100 million or 75 million dollars. So we're getting lots of money from alumni and whoever are willing to invest on um, education that will donate more money to us. And some faculty will um, donate money to FDU Vancouver campus. Um, so that's why we always uh, have a large amount of money to give for entrance scholarship. And thank you so much, Mrs. Ken and your team. Um, most of your students are 75% scholarship, and they are the best student any school can wish for. We are, we are very, very happy with your student, and they contribute a lot to like, working for the university and also so those are the new leaders and I'm sure they're gonna be very successful in the future. Um, do you have a four campuses and the, the two on the Warham campus and Politan campus are from the US? Uh, both in the U.S. and New Jersey. However, the Metropolitan Campus is only about 10 minutes from Manhattan City Center. Oh, I see that. So those two <laughs> campuses, um, like Florham Campus is more like old traditional type of a university cultural, while the Metropolitan Campus yeah. is very close to New York. So it's more like more than uh, big city feel, more like uh, the culture is more focused on like metropolitan, that kind of um, feel on the metropolitan campus. So in 1965, we acquired the Roxton College, which is the UK. Uh, that campus is only for study abroad. So we acquired that campus just for the student to go there, take one or two courses, and they do lots of, uh, it's more about experience, less about the academic study. So from Monday to Sunday, most of the students will be following uh, organized field trips to visit those big companies or visit government offices or um, other like not-for-profit organizations. So it's more like for them to learn more and experience more. They only take one or two courses there. Um, the Vancouver campus is funded in 2007. So students from Vancouver campus can pay Vancouver tuition to go to US or UK campuses for a semester. So we really promote study abroad and exchange. So students can experience more. So when they experience more, they're gonna be more competitive after graduation and, and go on the job market. That's why our student has been very, very successful after the study with us. So we really, most of the students will, will do a study abroad semester. And uh, I do have, uh, I guess a lot of uh, new pathway students has been going to Florham Metropolitan uh, or Roxton College in UK for a study abroad semester and they love the experience. We also have lots of US students from uh, Florham and Metropolitan come to Vancouver uh, to study abroad. So the reason after you choose to choose Vancouver to start another campus is more because it's a multicultural city. It's a very, very safe. People are super, super, super nice here in Vancouver. So it's, it's, it's the best place to promote our global education. That's why uh, this campus is not looking to enlarge. So we will remain small. The Vancouver campus is always going to be small. We won't have 2,000 students or 5,000 or 10,000. So this campus will be small. 
So maximum are gonna be 1,250 students by 2024. To keep it small, then our campuses are small and students get lots of personal attention. So it's a more personal focus and we can give students more training so their academic study will be very, very good. And we will give them a lot of opportunity to train their leadership skill, like all the other um, skills and knowledges. So they will be more competitive in the future to become a leader or like high level management team members. So that's our goal. So um, we will continue to be small and we will be very selective as well. So right now we have uh, 950 students over, from over 80 different countries. That means almost every single student undergrad classes are from a different country. So students get to learn from each other. So you won't be studying with all the students from Vietnam or some schools or everybody's from China or everybody from India. So we do have a large Indian population in the graduate program, but for undergrads, it's very well mixed. So that's what we've been trying very hard all these years, try to maintain nationality mix. So students can learn about all different cultures from each other. So before the pandemic, we actually celebrate all different nationalities, cultural events. So there's parties on campus almost every day. It normally starts after four o'clock, after students finish classes. Um, so there's always food. People, people joke that FDU is like a shelter, always have food provided. The reason we do that is, first of all, students are gonna learn to appreciate all foods from different culture. Also, it's another attraction for them to come out to join those events to learn more or to, to lead, to organize those events. So most of the events are organized by our students, student workers, we pay them to help us to work. And so it, it benefiting everybody. Um, so all those events is also like very focused on cultural exchange. Um, so in the future, students will have we better understanding about all different cultures so they can communicate and work with everybody from anywhere easily. So building people relationship and building that skill, we think is very important. And the, the fact that after students graduate and working, they approve that this kind of education really helped them a lot to be really stand out among student graduate from uh, some of the other schools. Um, Canadian education in general is very, very solid, very high quality because our gov uh, government, provincial uh, higher education government control it very seriously. So education in general is very good. So students are, you know, graduate from any programs that they are very good as well. Um, however, we, put extra effort to make sure our student will be more successful in the future. So the Vancouver campus only offers selected program. Uh, we have a three undergraduate degree and a two master degrees. So the most popular undergrad degree and most of the new pathway students were in is uh, the uh, business program, which has AACSB accreditation. So AACSB is one of the highest level and most difficult to get kind of uh, accreditation for any business program. So any business program that has AACSB means that they are top five in the world. Um, so we're one of the top 300 um, business school in the whole world. And then we also have a hospitality program that has been top 10 in the whole world as well. Uh, in 2018, we we're number six in the world. Last year was number five. This year we dropped to number eight. So world ranking is always top 10. Uh, so this is the first bachelor degree, bachelor of science in business administration. 
as I said, it has AACSB accreditation, so students um, mostly focus on international business. They can do a minor in digital marketing. That's new and it's very popular. Most students will do a minor in digital marketing on top of their own major. Um, we have lots of courses in marketing, in finance, and the FDU's business program is also very strong in entrepreneurship. So if any student want to develop a different stream, we have lots of courses available, and we have designated a professor to guide the student through different uh, streams to help their future development in certain discipline. Uh, the second degree is a Bachelor of Science in IT. So the Bachelor of Science in IT program wasn't too big, but recent years it got very, very popular. Uh, also because the jobs in Vancouver has been very popular. So the goal for student graduate from this program is, is targeting from um, about $50,000 to start kind of job. So we train students well, and before they graduate, the faculty are gonna make sure most of the students will get those very popular, I will say the most popular IT industrial certificate. So with one certificate, they can find a job easily with, to start with like $50,000, so it's a Canadian dollar. It's not very high in the IT industry, but that's how Vancouver is. If students go to Toronto or US, they can make lots more. So I do have uh, some students who graduate from FDU Vancouver, but they will stay here to work for a while and get their PR, become a Canadian PR, and then they, they will go to um, US to work in the IT industry and the pay can be doubled. So we do have students who might do that as well. There's a, another bachelor degree says a bachelor of arts in individualized studies. So, so this degree is more like create your own degree type. Um, so it has a lot of free elective courses that, that make it very easy and flexible for credit transfer. So for students who studied in another college, or students who studied in different universities in Vietnam, they can always bring their credit to this program. It's easy for transfer, for up to three years credit transfer. So that way students can spend as less as one year to complete their bachelor degree. So there's a different specialization in business communication applied technology. Uh, so students can go there. It's also good for some of the students, especially the Canadian student, when they, when they graduate, some students say, I don't know what to do in the future. They can also go to this program to take some courses while figure out what to do in the future. However, there's two specializations under the Bachelor of Arts degree. One of them is the hospitality and tourist management. Um, we had this program since the university founded in 1942. So it's a very long standing program and it's very well recognized. We've been top four in the US for lots of years. Um, and it's very well recognized by the hospitality and tourism industry. So the goal for FDU graduates is when they, when they finish their degree, they're supposed to be able to take on a minimum, like a manager level job in a five-star hotel. I'm talking about World 10 hotels. So that's our goal for this program. Student finish this program, they should be ready to go. Start as a manager. Actually, mo many of the students are already a manager in a five-star hotel before they graduate. And after graduation, they're supposed to get to the top level of the management within three to five years. So that's the trend for FDU graduates from this program, both in the US and in Canada. Especially Vancouver is a tourist city. 
So there's a lot of jobs in the hospitality and tourism industry, like um, hotels, like tur tourism and restaurant, like all those are like management level um, in, in this. So like Vancouver Aquarium, and there's, uh, oh, and, and also the gambling industry. So casinos and everything, they pay so well here. So it's like you're starting from manager level. It's easy to move up with the degree because Canada is not, so the education in hospitality and tourist management is not that popular in Canada. Not many universities has this program. Um, so FDU is, is a really a pioneer here in Vancouver, in Canada. It's, it's, I would say it's the, definitely the best program in Canada. And then we also have the master level here on Vancouver campus as well. So students can, after they graduate from the bachelor degree, they can go to work, get their PR, more work experience, and maybe come back to finish a master level degree, uh, part-time base. They don't have to quit their job, they can continue to work. Um, and another popular program is the international relations program. The reason this program is very popular is because we have, uh, first of all, very close relationship with the United Nations. And students are from somewhere. So it's a very multicultural environment. And um, we also um, recently added seven main courses focus on international relation and political science. So this uh, program is uh, stronger than before. And in general, before, before the pandemic, we also have a council general, like uh, ambassadors or council generals, those um, um, people come to our campus every month to talk to our students about all different kinds of world issues and everything. Every other month, we have an ambassador, a United Nations ambassador from different country on ITV. So we are very good with the remote learning thing. So students will be attending ITV and discuss about all different kinds of world issue with um, United Nations ambassador from different countries. So students are we on top of all the different things. Um, so they learn from the, you know, the best person possible in terms of the international relations. Um, so we also have the council generals teaching some of the elective courses for our students so they can learn from the best. And this program, this degree in general, <laughs> got very, very popular for two reasons. One, uh, very flexible for credit transfer. Two, the hospitality program and international relations program is a very, very attractive. So we have lots of freshmen students uh, getting into that program as well. So this is the three bachelor degree programs. And uh, okay, the best part, scholarship. Um, I think we're the only university offer unlimited uh, entrance scholarship in Canada, all the way up to 75%. So I do know for a fact that, that most of the new pathway students are getting 75% scholarship. So we have about one third of the undergrad students are on the high bracket of the scholarship. So 15,000 US dollar you're seeing here is the minimum. This is a for four year study. So minimum is a 15%. That's more like a study grant. We just give it to you. This is a for student just to meet the minimum requirement to get in. But most of the Vietnamese students, um, I would see 90% of the Vietnamese students on our campus are higher scholarship. So 65% or 75%. Um, oh, uh, one thing though, <laughs> we do charge a US dollar and the exchange rate is not so pleasant at the moment. 
So annual tuition is supposed to be $25,000, but students do not need to pay that much. They get, um, see, we have a chart. You can look at the bottom line, the bottom line on the screen, yearly tuition to be paid based on 30 credit. That's average, like average um, 30 credit, like 10 courses per year. Um, so maximum are going to be $21,000 and minimum are going to be $6,330. So $6,000 tuition per year. That means every semester going to be 3000 something. And we do allow students to pay by installment. So they pay by month. They don't have to pay. For example, the student register for five courses for the fall semester. They don't have to pay $3,000 at the beginning of the semester. They can pay by month, few hundred dollars per month. That's why most of our Vietnamese students who are studying with FDU Vancouver, they do not need money from parents. They can work for 20 hours per week during their study, and they work full time in the summer. So a minimum pay here, I think I think it's a fifteen, uh, fourteen point five dollars something. Um, so it, they can easily make enough money for the tuition fee for their living cost as well. Of course, I'm not talking about living in a luxury apartment and drive a fancy car. It's a basic living, so they can make enough money to pay for themselves. So if student uh, gets. Seventy-five or seventy-five percent scholarship. They do need to provide SAT, and Mrs. Ken is a, is an expert on guiding students to get there. And also for a student who has a straight A and a SAT, they can also apply to a special uh, a special program. We call it Global Scholars Program. That's a, a extracurricular. Uh, we provide a more opportunity to train students to become a real global leader, train their like leadership skill uh, other than study. Um, so this is, um, so the average overall student on FDU Vancouver campus, the average tuition is about $15,000 per year because some students pay less, some students pay more. The average is about 40% average out. We combine all the students together, that's the average. Um, so this is the scholarship chart. Um, it's basically, if you get straight A and SAT, and this page at the bottom, you can see to get 65% scholarship, you need 1180 for SAT. Or if you want 75% scholarship, you need 1280 plus straight A from high school, which is 86% um, based on our standard. So entrance scholarship for 50% and below, we just need their high school transcript to evaluate. For example, if a student has a straight A from high school, like 8.6, they will be eligible for 50%, 5-0, entrance scholarship. So their tuition will be dropped by half almost. So it's automatic. You don't have to apply for the scholarship. We will evaluate automatically. It's unlimited. So whoever meets this uh, requirement, they will get that scholarship. We won't tell you, say, oh, we don't have enough money to pay for that, so you don't get that much. So it's unlimited and it's guaranteed. Um, the pre-university is for students who meet all the other requirements, but academic writing is a little bit weak. So if students are fluent in speaking or listening, uh, but they are having difficulty to write, like write research papers, write essays. So we have the pre-university program to help them to further improve their uh, writing skills. So each class will be only about 12 students, so more personal interaction with the professor. Also, it's only for first semester. 
And it's not a standalone program because students can take two to three bachelor degree courses plus two academic writing courses. So the cost is minimal, but this program has been approved very, very good um, to make sure students' future study in terms of academic writing will be very smooth. So students do recognize the benefit of this program. So some students will try not to write well on our test, so they can take advantage of the pre-university program. So in case uh, students are placed in, into the PUP, don't worry about it. It's only for one semester, and it's only added to academic courses to help you with the writing. Uh, we also have some pathway program. I wouldn't see most of our Vietnamese students that they need pathway, that they need more ESL. So in case anyone didn't have time to prepare English better, you can also apply as a pathway student. So apply to one of the ESL school because we don't have ESL. We only have bachelor degree and master degree programs. So you can get double acceptance to apply for a study permit come here to study more English, and then uh, move to FDU to study the bachelor or master degree program. So now many schools allow students to start from overseas, so they can start from overseas as well for ESL school part and for FDU part. So we have lots of study abroad options. Other than our own campuses in US and UK, we have over 50 different countries, uh, sorry, 50 different universities in different countries that our students can go study abroad. They can choose one to go, either choose the best program or choose the best destination. So recent years, Germany has been very popular for FDU Vancouver students. Lots of students go to Germany to uh, study abroad. Some go to Italy, some go to Switzerland. So there's lots of options. Oh, um, <laughs> the, at the bottom, there's a student. She went to China, Chengdu, to see the pandas. Uh, we have a, a American Learning Center there. So she got to study with all the students from um, different famous universities in the US. They also go to China to study for study abroad. So she had lots of fun there too. So as I said earlier, we have very close relationship with the United Nations and we're the first university designated as an official NGO of the UN. So that's really a great honor for us. Um, I mentioned earlier, we have a global scholars program. This is an extracurricular. Student doesn't have to apply to this one, but this is a program that will give student extra classes. It's free, extra classes, extra training, extra opportunities to, to practice their leadership skill. So they will have broader vision for different things and they will be more successful in the future. So those program, including like going to the United Nations for seminars or for internships, even for this is the headquarter office in New York for uh, the, of the United Nations. So almost every year we send a team to headquarter office in the United Nations to go for the national model you and always win big, big award. Um, it's a pity that this year we also send a team to Japan, Tokyo. We, we booked hotel and flight ticket and everything, but we had to cancel it because of the pandemic. So otherwise the student also going to Tokyo for the world model UN as well. So we try to give them lots of opportunity and we pay for it. So we pay for hotels, normally five-star hotels, and we pay for their flight tickets as well. So this 2016, we have a, a Vietnamese brothers. The chubby one is uh, Mickey, and the uh, the one on the right is 
uh, uh, their mothers when uh, make, make kids when you're older. So they both stood the scholarship and they are a lot at FDU. Uh, they are there again, Mickey and Lucky. That you should be able to recognize the face, uh, the Vietnamese brothers. So they are so famous now, both in U.S. campus and Vancouver. Uh, people don't remember their name, but they call them the brothers, and they go like everywhere to perform. They went to both campuses. They went to United Nations headquarters office for the National Model UN conference twice. Yeah. So we always win the big award, like this year, Distinguished Delegation Award. I was there with them, so I took this photo for them. Um, the one from left side, the second one, Carlos, he's a national test champion student from El Salvador. He graduated from our IT program, has been very, very successful in the IT industry right now. He's a very famous, he was a featured in different media as well. Um, very smart student. So all of the students are 75% scholarship recipient. They're all from different countries as well. Yeah. Uh, the second from right, V, is also a Vietnamese student. She's from uh, Ho Chi Minh City, graduated, and she already, a, she just graduating this April, like now. She, she already got a job in a very expensive private high school as a marketing manager. I was hoping I can keep her to work for me, but that's too slow. And she already got a very good job. So this student all, these are the teams that we sent to National Model UN Conference in New York. It's a very good experience for the student. When I was watching them to speak, in the United Nations headquarter office, I also like feel so proud of them. Yeah, they are the best student anyone could wish for. And recent years, we've been getting three awards. Yeah, too bad, 2000, um, 2020, we don't have any stories to tell. Um, so now we have a two master degree program, uh, the most popular master of administrative science. This program got so popular because many people want to get Canadian PR. And this program is very practical, very job oriented. So after they get this uh, um, degree from a different specialization, it's very easy to get a job. And the tuition is not expensive at all. So the, it's a two year master degree. That means a student will be able to get three years work permit after. And the total tuition is $29,000. That's for two years, not one year. So that's the total tuition for the program. And yeah, student can focus on different um, stream. They can do human resource, they can go global technology. It's more based on what they did in their bachelor degree, so they can find a fit here. All this different specialization is targeting to high uh, jobs in BC, in our province, in high demand. So this got very, very popular. So we, we have to be very selective. And we also try to maintain the national uh, nationality mix in the master degree program as well. Um, so some countries are very difficult to get in. For example, if a student from India, they have to have minimum 6.5 and no band below 6.5 to apply. And we still cannot guarantee if they're gonna get selected. So student in this program has a very high profile as well. And the other one is the Master of Science in Hospitality Management Studies degree. This is the only science degree in hospitality management field in Canada. Um, again, it's very popular. Uh, once they graduate from this program, student can, you know, can be advanced in their career development so fast, faster than that you can imagine. 
However, um, I do want to remind any of the students who might be interested in the Master of Science and Hospitality Master's degree, uh, it's more challenging to study. So this program is more demanding in research papers. So your academic writing skill has to be very, very solid. So the university offer lots of support. We do have a one-on-one -on -one tutoring for academic writing. And then we also have a one-on-one -on -one tutoring for every single class if student needed, it's all free. So as long as you're, you're working hard, we will help you to overcome all the roadblocks if there's any. And faculty from this program also come up with some money on their own. Uh, to offer another additional writing class for their student. It's a free. So all this additional thing is a free to help students to learn more about research papers. So what I'm saying is that this program is a bit difficult to study. So student has to be really, really focused on academic study and also spend lots of time to work in the industry. We want them to have lots of work experience before they graduate, so they will be guaranteed for a very decent job with decent pay. Uh, we want to make sure every single student graduate from the hospitality program to start from manageable work. So it's not that difficult, but studying a research paper in this program is a bit challenging. Um, tuition fee is, uh, is oh sorry oh it's a because there's one course more so it's a 33 credit also two years um so total tuition will be thirty two thousand dollars by the way sorry i need to go back a little bit the master of uh, administrative science degree even though it is a two-year master degree but fdu vancouver has a three semesters per year so that means if student in the Master of Science degree, they can finish, there's a possibility they can finish within one year and four months and still get three years work permit. So just an option. Uh, Pre-master is the same, uh, same uh, structure with the uh, pre-university program. So student can take one master degree courses plus two academic writing courses at the first semester if they need help for academic writing. If they do not need help for academic writing, they go direct entry. They don't have to take the pre-master. Others is all promo thing. Uh, one thing I'd like you to know is the uh, Model UN Club, which is the most popular club on campus. So make sure you apply to that club or become a club member. So in the future, when you want to go to United Nations headquarter office, for example, you will be eligible to compete with the other student. And we pay for five-star hotels in New York. We pay for their flight ticket. Students only need to pay for their own food. Um, and those students who got into the Global Scholars Program, the extracurricular program I said earlier, they also get 2,000 US dollar additional uh, scholarship to help with, for example, uh, meals in New York, that kind of thing, to make sure nobody got left out because of financial problem. So we try uh, to make sure students get the opportunity they want. Uh, yeah, the first one is the diplomatic speaker survey. Like I said earlier, every month we have a consul general or ambassador from different country come to our campus to do um, uh, to to speak to students. And normally there will be like 10, 15, 20 diplomat on campus that day to join the events because after that speaker uh, person finish speaking, they're going to be in network session. So again, it's more like a cocktail party without alcohol. Students will be like having lots of time, like two to three hours to network with this 10, 20 uh, diplomats and ask questions and get their business card, take photos and do whatever. So students can make a very close relationship 
with those uh, diplomats. So when uh, when Vietnam first started a consular office in Vancouver, um, the consul general came to our campus to talk to our students. And he also invited us and uh, some of our students to go to a Chinese New Year celebration at the consulate office as well. I went there too with all this very nice food and all the government officials from Vienna as well. So it's a very good opportunity for students to make relationships. The last one is the Toastmaster Club where students can practice their public speaking skill. It's all free. It happens every Tuesday and there's also food after the club so students can practice. So now every of uh, these events are put on hold but we're still trying to do uh, Zoom parties for our students. So they still interact with us all the time. And now the semester, spring semester ending, so we're gonna have a Zoom party for our students for the end of the semester celebration as well. Um, and we do offer, we do organize two career fairs every year, one for full-time, permanent job, another one for part-time job uh, while they're still studying. So we have two full-time uh, career counselor. They are very well connected to help students to look for jobs. And we have two student service um, staff who has, uh, one of them has a, a IRCC license, like full immigration license to help students with study permit exchange and work permit application, even when they uh, graduate, work for one year, apply for PR, they also come back for a free consultation. And uh, another has a RISIA, that's folk uh, license, that's folks are international student immigration matters as well. That's pretty much of it. Any questions? Sorry, I took so long. I'm done. Is there any questions? Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello. My name is Lan Ang. You leave the screen sharing thing. Um, can you oh. see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, I'm listening to your speech. Yes, yeah, it's a nice, nice, yes, it's a nice to hear about your speaking today about your university. Uh, Thanks. I'm, I'm interested in uh, your university for case of my son who is uh, born in 2003, uh, who is okay. a little, yeah, who is sitting next to me now. Can you see him? <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. You got a decent boy there. Yeah. Um, uh, he is now in the 11th grade in Vin School. Okay. And okay. Um, uh, we're supposed to we arrange for him to uh, make a planning for his study abroad in uh, the year 2021, in the next year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, I'm uh, reading something about your university through uh, internet. Yeah, yeah, some web page of uh, New South, um, New Password, yeah, New Pathways, and some other sources. Uh, and I'd like to know something about you. About uh, can you tell a little more about IT program in your university uh, and uh, the ability for him to uh, study after the graduation of university level or uh, seeking mm -hmm. for a job. And uh, as well as uh, finding a, a part-time uh, job during the time in university for him. Uh, and he, he's here, you can ask him something if you like, and he can answer, oh, sure. he can answer to you. Sure, thanks. Uh, so the IT program, basically, first of all, you can get higher scholarship because um, uh, we, um, Greg Olson, when you see the scholarship chart, we have a Greg Olson scholarship. Greg Olson is our alumni who graduated from IT program, both bachelor and master level. He donated $5 million to Vancouver campus, designated. 
So IT student will reg, uh, will normally gonna get higher entrance scholarship as well. So to ensure student will get the best job possible, we do um, you know have our program adjusted all the time, like. So they are learning the, the most updated information, especially for IT, and also get those uh, industrial licenses. So in the future, they will uh, they have three licenses, um, and we are member and student have discount to even pay for the test. So it's a very minimal cost, and even with only one license, they can start with a fifty thousand dollar job, and also. We are planning to bring the master degree program to the Vancouver campus as well. So in the future, he will catch that time. In the future, they can do four plus one. So four four year bachelor degree, two year master degree, they can combine four plus one. They, uh, he can get master degree. And as soon as he graduate from the master degree, he will get PR without having to work for one year first. Mm. Yeah, so job-wise, I don't think you need to be concerned. And we do use a student because in our IT department, we only have two people, staff. Uh, so we use a lot of students to work for the IT department as well. Um, because um, we have lots of computer on campus. And every third year, we have to uh, replace all the computer with a new computer. So there's a system update, there's software update, there's a hardware update. So only two staff cannot do those jobs. So most of the time, it's our student worker who's helping with those jobs. Um, again, we don't pay that much for student worker. We pay $15 per hour. So student can also work on campus for us as well. Then, yeah, uh, how many hours a student can uh, work a week or per month? 20, 20 hours, maximum 28, but we normally, uh, that that's immigration law, we don't decide on that. So during their study time, it's 20 hours. A week. This is right. Per week. Yeah. Yeah. And that is uh, in the semester times and in the holidays. Uh, in holiday, the there's no restriction for summer because we normally change all the computer to new ones in the summer. So students can work full time. No. Yeah, they can work on any job for full time in the summer. Yeah. As long as they don't study for full time. Yes. Yeah, you can ask her. Okay, so I so I plan to I plan to live in a campus, and I I want to ask you that is the campus far from the university? Do I have to commute or use other transports? Okay, we we do not have dorm because our we um the Vancouver campus is a city center campus. We don't have dorm. So new student coming here, we normally can either arrange a homestay. So you can stay with a homestay for one month, two months, three months um, to learn how to go about in Vancouver. And then you can move out and rent or share with somebody else. Oh, so I we see. don't have more. So it's, it's your choice to be closer to campus or further away. But transit in Vancouver is very easy. Okay. Yeah, it's a very easy. So buses and uh, sky trains are a few minutes wait. Thanks. Yeah. I'd like to ask about the, uh, uh, during this uh, 90, uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, at, at the mm -hmm. right now, uh, any policy from the government for the student, especially international student, uh, why they are studying there? Because I see that in the, for, Canadian students, they have some uh, package from the uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, which is uh, just issued yesterday, that about $1,250 per uh, for three months or four months like that. But this is only for Canadian students. And any yeah, other policy for the international students in this way? Yeah, I think uh, our government has been very, very considerate 
first of all, they will allow international students who got study permit already approved already to start classes for summer and fall from overseas. So student, um, those students who plan to start in the summer or in the fall, uh, they can start from overseas. They can study from home. Um, also, those international students who has been working here, those who has been working here, if they lost their job because of the pandemic, uh, they can get, get government support. The government gonna pay them without waiting. Because of for, for example, if somebody lost their job, the government normally need to wait for two weeks to give them money. But with the pandemic, they will get money like in within so many hours, like 48 or something. So the government also including international student for that. Um, and for FDU, we use a lot of student workers to work for us. But during the pandemic, they are not on campus, so they cannot work. We're still paying them regular rate. For example, uh, before the pan pandemic, you work for 20 hours per week. That's uh, $300 per week, right? So we are paying the same. Even though the student is not working for us anymore, we're still paying for them. I see. Yeah, I think the gov uh, Canadian government has been very, very uh, considerate and and doing whatever they can to try to help international students as well. Any questions? Any other questions? So. What's your GPA look like right now? Yeah, you like to, to ask that um, my, my son also has a question he asked. Uh, yeah, sure. That, um, the, during the studying there, uh, if uh, any problems the health, these other things, how can cover in, is covered in the tuition already or something? Yeah. No, um, there, there's some medical insurance. It's not covered in the tuition, by the way. There's a medical insurance. So the first three months that they're gonna use, uh, we call it Guard Me uh, medical insurance. It's about two dollar per day. After three months, they, they're gonna enjoy the government, uh, the government medical coverage. Mm -hmm. And also, we FU Vancouver, we have our own clinical uh, doctors on campus as well. So if students say study too hard, uh, final test, they're stressed or they have any mental problem, they're not happy or, or broke up with girlfriends or boyfriends that they are going through a difficult time. So we have our own medical clinical counseling on campus available as well and that's it. Okay. Xin. Ừm. Thì các các phụ huynh các phụ huynh có hỏi đi ạ. Chào Lan Anh, chị Khánh. Chào Khánh ạ. Chào con. Con trai nhá. Con trai nhá. 75% của trường con trai nhá. Vâng ạ. Um, phụ huynh của New Pathway thì rất là nhiều phụ huynh là cũng chia sẻ nhưng mà hôm nay cũng không có thời gian gửi cái chia sẻ của các phụ huynh cho các vị phụ huynh và các con thì nhưng mà rất là nhiều phụ huynh là cứ con đầu tiên cho đi FDU và sau đó đến con thứ hai thì lại gửi gắm gửi sang trường và uh, có nhiều trường hợp là hai anh em và hai chị em đều học ở trường FPU và đều đạt được học bổng uh, 75% Đấy. như thế là một cái um, hỗ trợ tài chính rất là lớn cho gia đình uh, cũng có nhiều phụ huynh cũng chia sẻ rất là thật là uh, khi mà cho con thứ nhất đi ấy, thì tại sao mà gia đình lại 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 vui như thế và thỏa mãn như thế và hài lòng như thế và quyết định cho con thứ hai thì, uh, không phải là một chuyện đơn giản vì đây là một quyết định rất là mạnh dạn bởi sao bởi vì thứ nhất là các bạn ấy đã tự thích khe được mình tự cover ngoài học bổng ra các bạn đi làm thêm được và vẫn còn coi như là uh, chi phí cho tự bản ăn ở 
cũng như là đi du lịch và thậm chí là đón em sang cũng hỗ trợ cho bố mẹ nữa cho nên là khi mà phụ huynh có hai con đều thấy rằng rất an toàn và rất là toại nguyện và thành công và tin tưởng của các con và quyết định cho con thứ hai đi thế thì uh, rất là muốn học sinh của New Pathway hôm nay là đạt nhiều học bổng 25% thế uh, con trai cô nhá tăng xong còn thậm chí coi như là tính được những việc làm về ngành IT có hệ thông tin xong rồi là sinh xong rồi về cho mẹ <cười> vâng chị gái đây sau cái hôm nay thì, thì có một cái cũng mới so với cả những cái mà em được biết từ công ty chị trong suốt thời gian qua ấy thì chắc là chị cũng có nghĩ lại cái bài nói của